Hi, I'm CB, and in this tutorial I'm going to talk about inking, which is something I've been doing a lot of lately, for whatever reason. And I'll be using Photoshop Elements and show you how to do it as well, with a few changes in Photoshop to use take advantage of some of the brush options that are in Photoshop that are not in Elements. So I've got a photo here that has a mat attached to it and then a background. You can pretend this is a background paper and then this is your photograph. I've just got the mat attached to it here so that we can see the inking a little bit better. Both methods in Photoshop and Photoshop Elements, I'm going to start by creating a new layer for my brushwork, and that's where I'm going to be painting. I've got this brown color selected as my foreground, but of course you can ink with whatever color you want. I've got my brush tool selected here, and I'm going to go into the brushes and choose from the wet medium brushes set in Elements, and it's also in Photoshop too. Scroll down here until you get to the second to the last one here, this one that's 45 pixels by default, it's watercolor textured surface. And that has a nice sort of random little edge to it that works well, I think, for this particular uh, application of pretending to ink something. So I've got that selected, and you can, uh, anyone who does that to me, <laughs> you can change the size of your brush if you wish a little bit. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit here for this, not too much though. And I've lowered the opacity just a little bit too just so that I have a little more to play with so that I'm working with the um, procedure. I can't think of the word I'm <laughs> trying to get, but I'm, I'm going to try to make this look like it's sort of been inked with alcohol ink so that it's it's got sort of a bit of a transparent see-through nature to it. So before I do start inking this, I want to make sure to keep my brush strokes within this mat. I don't want to get it over on the green. So I'm going to hold down my control key or command key on the Mac and click on the thumbnail of the photo. That puts marching ants around my photo mat layer here so that I'm not going to go outside that. If I wanted, I could also hide the marching ants by holding control or command and the H key. They're still there, but you can't see them. In fact, see if I start painting, you notice it's not putting anything down on the green. Now, this is a nice thing to do, but I sometimes forget to unhide it and forget that I have a selection already going. So I'm going to push the same thing again, Control and H or Command and H, and bring it back up just so that I don't forget and start painting. But you'll see that if, if the marching ants are driving you nuts here, then you can get rid of them temporarily. Just don't forget to unhide it and then deselect at the end. So I'm just brushing, you know, I'm holding the brush mostly off of the layer and then sort of building it up a little bit and going around. I'm going to do this really fast here, so it may not look perfect, but just where I want more ink, I would uh, go over it more than once, probably, and just kind of, you know, you certainly don't want to be perfect here because that will kind of ruin the effect. So I'm going to deselect Control and D or Command and D, and then change this blend mode to Multiply, just to make it a little bit darker. Definitely looks like it's been kind of inked up with a pad. Now I would take this photo layer and I'll put a drop shadow on it here. Double click there. Then I'm going to go into this. Um, to change the settings of it, I will click, double click the little FX, brings up the style settings box. I'm going to change the distance, obviously, on this drop shadow, but the reason I brought this up also is I want to add a stroke to this. Now, I don't want this nasty red that I've got there. I'm going to go over here, click on the foreground color, and put it on that same brown. And the reason I like to put the stroke on here is because when you're rubbing a, an ink pad around your photo, you're probably going to have ink on the ex edge of it. It will be random when on the mat itself where the ink is sort of seeping through, but you're going to cover all the edges, and I just think that's a nice little finishing touch. So an elements there, that is done, and I'm happy with that. The only other thing I would probably do here is have my photos layer selected, hold down my shift key, select my ink layer, and then link these two together so that if I move these layers around, I'm moving both the ink and the photo at the same time. So now I'm going to pop into Photoshop here, and it's going to start out the same way. I'm going to create a new layer to work on. I'm going to hold down my control key, or command key if you're using a Mac, and get my marching ants. got a dark brown selected. I'm going to click on my brush tool. I've got the wet media brushes already selected again here, but I like to use a different brush in Photoshop. I'm using this one right here that's, let's see, hover for a second, see, oil, medium brushes, wet edge. And I'm going to go into the brushes palette over here on the right to get up, oh, it's right off screen here, let me pull it here, 
to bring up all my options, excuse me, <coughs> sorry about that, and show you that in the shape dynamics section, I've got my size jittering. This is what it started out as. I'm jittering that and the angle too. Again, if I slide it down, you'll see it started out like that. And this just really adds a lot more randomness. Same with these jitters of these axes, the X and the Y axis. I've got them selected. So now we've got something that's a nice random look to it. So I will, well, I'll close it, but it won't close, so I'll move it off screen. Same thing. I'm going to take this brush now and just start inking all along the edge. Pretty much the same situation. I would put the stroke, I would put the shadow, I'd lock these, change that to multiply, and I'd get the same effect. It's just a different brush, and this, I think, gives me a little bit more randomness to it, and I find it a little easier to work with than just that round brush that was the sort of brush that where you're stuck with the options that they give you in in elements. So I like to take this one and, and use it as my own personal inking brush. And as you can see, I can just sort of play with that a bit. So I'm CB, and that's how to ink a photo. And as I said, you don't have to just do photos. There's alphas and all sorts of things. But that's the basic idea of how to do that. Thanks for watching.